and welcome to another episode of Tribunal of the Grid, where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. I'm Will. And today, not even today, y'all, this week. It's <laughs> <laughs> been crazy. What? Girl, like what has crazy. been happening? I, it, it, this this week has just been absolutely ridiculous. Like, I, it was just like bombs over Baghdad. Like, it's just like, <laughs> after, like, just literally, just things are happening. And I don't understand why. Like, whoever's playing this Jumanji Power Rangers game needs to stop. <laughs> Not even, <laughs> seriously. Like, it's just like, what is happening? Like, literally every, everything under the sun that you could, possibly think of is just like I'm gonna happen today and nobody can say anything about it like I mean what is going on it's just it's just too much it's, it's too much it's too much y'all like I it, this, this is too much for me uh, go from the beginning shall we Let, let's let's start from the toys ooh. now this, the, the past couple of days right you know, they were just like, things were just popping up all over the place. And, you know, we just getting all sorts of little little, little goodies, little gadgets. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. now, first on the list, first on the list, those damn Psycho Rangers. That Ooh. five pack popped up. Ooh. Now, first of all, it popped up in Miss Malaysia, honey. You know, I had to go get my Malaysia. My I, it popped up when I was um researching for my Malaysian Rennie for my hair. You know, my my, my hair. <laughs> I had to go get my weave, honey. <laughs> but no, like for real, it popped up in Malaysia. Um, a lot of fans over there were already um were already getting it, and they were already posting pictures. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you. It still ain't came out over here. <laughs> but overseas, they didn't already, you know, got their box and, you know, un, un, unpackaged the, the, uh, the figures. What'd you say? They got to feel it. They got to play with it. Right. Yeah. Already yeah. taking yeah. pictures. Yeah. I mean, just doing the most. Mm-hmm. I'm like, <laughs> why can't we? Why can't we get them? You know what I'm saying? So the pictures came out. You know, finally the the uh, the professional pictures came out. Mm-hmm. And y'all, I have to say, I'm of two minds on this, y'all. I'm I'm I'm, I'm of two minds. <laughs> y'all know, Brandon, when he's of two minds, this is gonna be <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Now, 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 now. <laughs> Why in the world? Now, now, don't get me wrong. I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy that we're getting the Psycho Rangers. We've been promised mm-hmm. the Psycho Rangers since the mm-hmm. Legacy line. Mm-hmm. And y'all... I am very happy that we finally got these Psycho Rangers. I am so happy that we finally got the five pack. Mm -hmm. However, however, comma. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Why did Hasbro release not just Psycho Red first, in in a double pack with Lost Galaxy Red, but then turn around and release Psycho Blue on his own just so that we can go ahead and go back and buy Psycho Red and Psycho Blue again with the other five, with the other three. That, come on, that Brad. Just, come on, Brad. They you want our answer. money. Exactly. They want our money. <laughs> and on top of that, on top of that, I have a feeling that they're probably going to do a two-pack with Kendricks and Psycho Pink in the <gasps> Sword at some point. Yeah. So that's making me think, damn, do I want to get this five pack now? Right. But that could right. be the only way that we, that could be the only way that I get Psycho Yellow. <laughs> cool. Unless, uh, yeah, unless somebody like, like sells it, you know, a loose figure. I kind of want the box. So I don't know. I want the box. Th- that box is nice. The, the box, box is nice. Mm-hmm. 
I, I have to say the box is gorgeous. Um, but y'all, I'm just y'all, like if they turn around and they give us a to the tenth power, what was it? Uh power of pink, what, whatever that episode mm-hmm. was. And they give us mm-hmm. Kendrick's Psycho Pink. And then they even bust out and give us a three pack and give us Cassie. You know what? I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> you because, know. Because, oh, wow. They could do a three pack. They, they could do that. They, they totally could do that. And you know they're going to do it. Because now that we said it, yeah, they're going to do it. I mean, like, it, they, they, they totally could do it. They could totally do it. And then add the Salvage, the salvage Sword in there and... Like, I mean, they could really slay. However, that means we have to just, you know, potentially if that does not happen, you know, what we're going to buy this. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know what? Hmm, let's go ahead and release that too. That means we'll have like three of the, pretty much the same toys as far as red, blue, and pink. Mm-hmm. We'll have two of the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we have to keep buying other things in order to get the other things. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. just like, what is, I, and I, I, I understand it's a money game. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand it's a money game. I understand it's all about, all about them dollars, the dollar, dollar bill, yo. Mm. But this is just ridiculous. Like, come on, y'all. Mm. Come on. Like, y'all, this, it, it's stressing me out. Like, listen, my COVID money, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I'm stretching these things four ways, honey. Like, this is just, this is too much. This is too much. I'm like, ah. I mean, they look stunning. They look beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking at the pictures now. Like, the girls, they even have a feminine shape. I mean, pretty much like on the actual TV show, they didn't have a feminine shape because they were all obviously men. Um, you know, <laughs> as, you know. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the costumes, they were all men. And they were all designed the same way, just different colors. But I love the fact that the girls actually have kind of like a cleavage bust line. And they actually kind of like have hips a little bit just to let you know, okay, yes, we're women. And, you know, we're, you know, we have the, you know, the parts that women have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, they, they look good. I'm like, Okay. Flips hair. Um, so I, I mean I like them. I really do. I like them. I could do without the little hand energy stuff. Like I, I can do without that. But like overall, I, I, I like them. What do you guys think? They are hot. Hot. I want I want I actually want the set. Like I, I never wanted any of the toys, but this this set I definitely want. And I love the fact that they did the, they've actually finally released the girls. And you know what? I'd be okay with it too. They do two pack with Kendra's. I'm here for that too. Mm-hmm. One. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, it's nice that we finally are getting Psycho Pink and Psycho Yellow. Um, it's only $100. That's <laughs> only it? $100. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably, it's probably just like, like three hundred dollars Canadian. So never mind. I take that back. Which is is not so bad, but I'm thinking about like the shipping cost because I I don't know if they'll put that in a store. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Is it is well, it a Comic Con exclusive? No, it's an Amazon exclusive. So, Amazon exclusive. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. So if you have Amazon Prime, oh, um, so like, it, I have Prime. Okay. Yeah, so it shouldn't cost you that much at all for shipping. Damn it. It, 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 it not even cost you anything, to be honest, if it's on Prime. Uh, yeah, that's true. So you just might, it, might have just to pay the 99 it. Yeah, I might get that. But then, I, like I said before, the idea that they probably could um, sell something for me, at least, that I think would be more appealing, which is a two-pack or a three-pack, like you said, with, with Kendrick's uh, and or uh, Cassie or yeah that that that's actually that oh that's making me reconsider yeah. but right. there's no con- there's no confirmation of that so right 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 I mean obviously there's no, there's no confirmation of it but it's just 
you know, for you know, those listening, we're not trying, we're not, we, we have no idea <laughs> that, that, you know, the future of the toys that, that's coming out, but purely you know, like, speculation. I, I yeah, purely I'm speculation. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, it's like, if, if they were to do that, it's just kind of like, dag, like, y'all just, y'all, y'all killing our pocket is what you're doing. Like, come on. Like, yeah, you're killing us. Um, so yeah, that was that was the first thing that uh that I saw that was like interesting. I was like, mm, all right. <laughs> um also looking at the looking at the toys and everything that, that that were popping up. So you know how they have the helmets and everything, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So, um, originally, they had the White Ranger helmet. Now they are releasing the Red, a Red Ranger helmet. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I now, feel about that. What do you say? I said, I don't know how I feel about that. You know what, girl? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> girl. Now, let me just go ahead and put it like this. The helmet itself, like, I, here, here's the thing. I'm kind of irritated because we're not going to get the full line of helmets. No. You know what I'm saying? And we're just going to keep getting, more than likely, Jason. Yep. Tommy. Um, is, is that even a question? Well, I mean, I mean. You know, we hell, we might even get a Green Ranger. I mean, even even though Bandai what? already did it, you know they we are. okay. We are. <laughs> you know, I feel like know, they they they've they done that. Yeah, they've done that with something else where we got a Legacy something, and then they did it with the Lightning Collection too. I can't remember. I know they're doing it with the Morpher. But I feel like they did right. that with something else. Yeah, I mean, like, well, that's the thing. Like, Hasbro is definitely repeating a lot of the things that the legacy collection has already that yeah the legacy legacy collection has already done from bandai they're definitely repeated um i can't say that i'm happy about that because i'm definitely not um because there's just there's just so many things like this franchise has so many like toys so many things you can choose from and yet you keep giving us the same things that Bandai has already done. It's like, come on, y'all. Like, I, I get it. Y'all are like, you know, we're trying to give y'all all the Mighty Morphin things. And, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to live it up. We're trying to do it. We're trying to do it big for y'all. I get it. But this is not the tea. Like, I'm sorry, but no tea, no shade. I don't really care about a Jason helmet. I, I don't. Like, okay. if you're not going to give us other people's helmets, like maybe a Zach, a Trini, hell, the minorities, if you're not going <laughs> to give us other people, I don't, I don't care. Like, I mean, it's, it, it, basically, that's really what it is. Like, because if, because if you notice, any toy, especially as of right now, that they've put out, most of the toys they put out have always been Tommy, Jason, Kimberly, and Billy. Mm-hmm. But as far as Zach and Trini, where do you at, though? That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Because with the flip heads, where do you at? Oh, yeah. Where do you at? I'm just saying. Even Did they release... Really- t- what you say? They re- they released Billy for that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Billy, yep. Because oh. Billy's face looked actually better than the Golden Girl's face he had. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. For the for the um for the uh the flip head re-release. That's what I'm talking about. No, oh. no, wait, wait, you talking about the, you, wait, what, what flip head? Oh, you, are I you talking thought, about the, like, the, oh, crap. I thought you I'm were talking about the one, the auto morph and re-release. You're talking about, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the ones okay. where they had kind of like you. the little vest you. thing, whatever. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. That definitely had included <sighs> Billy, but it included none of the minorities. 
Right. So I'm like, what's the tea? Like, I mean, I'm tired of getting just the white people. Like, can we get, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just, <laughs> hello, Black Lives Matter. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> I can't. Like, <laughs> what is going on? And like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I get, they, they, I'm sure they have a plan. I mean, I'm sure it's just basically kind of like a, oh, we're trying to see what sells better and blah, 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 blah. I get all of that stupid stuff. I get it. No. But. No. <laughs> I'm not buying that shit. Because you know what sells better? Like the yellow Trini. Yes, she did. You yes, did. Yes, she did. Right, right, right. She sold the fuck out. So don't be yes, coming at us with being like, we're trying to see what sells better. We already know. Kimberly, Billy, and Jason, and freaking even Tommy is going to sell. We already know that. But Trini outsold all of them. Sure did. Mm-hmm. Yes, she did. So where is that? Where is our like? We need more Trini. We need more Sack. So I don't. Care I agree. I I agree. I I, I one hundred and ten percent agree you know? with you. Um. However, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. I I, I, I seriously, I don't. I don't know. I like <sighs> the 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 optimist in me wants to go, you know what? They're going to do right by us. They're going to do right by the fans. They're going to give the people what they want because they, we want inclusion and we want the minorities because that's what they said. They said he was going to give us all the, all the inclusion, all the things. That's, that's what they said. And um, so far, it's just like, mm, are you? Because, hey. mm, I mean, right now, I mean, I don't see it, but okay, whatever whatever so as far as how i feel about the helmet pass i don't care (laughs) i agree pass i mean yeah i don't think i'm buying it so unless y'all releasing a kimberly one i mean i'm here for that but i'm surprised that they haven't done that actually i'm surprised too actually because it's just as popular so i'm i'm sure yeah i mean I, i don't know I don't know. I mean, like I said, if at any point they wanted to go ahead and give us a Trini, you know, aka Aisha, because you know, you know how I feel about Aisha, so because that, that helmet ain't gonna be Trini if I get it. It's not gonna be Trini. It's gonna be Aisha. So um, <laughs> there's that. Um, if if we do get that, y'all you already know I'm buying it. Like that's that's just, that's just gonna happen. I think I would do that um, too. Yeah, like for sure. Like I I need love a that helmet. Like, yeah, for sure. But other than that, like y'all, I'm I'm just over it. Like I don't I'm not I'm not a fan. No, nope, me neither. No. Me neither. And lastly, we got SPD Omega Ranger. He hit the scene. Right. Now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, child. I think That's a beautiful he probably, figure. He's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. I'm like, I'm actually, like, the thing is, I'm trying to, the only issue, if I had to be picky and nitpick, I could nitpick two things, two. And that's even really not that big of a deal, to, at least to me. But the lines on him are a little wrong. They are they're a little wrong. Because uh-huh. that the uh the 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 part of the five, the V, it's a little too thick. And it's not lining up either. I know they're supposed to like move around, but they don't look like they're lined up at all. Yeah, and, and I think that, that that was the reason why they made them a little thicker mm. is so that they can line a little better. Mm. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know. It just, for me, it just, I, I don't, it, that it, it's so thick because basically what's supposed to happen is the, the emblem, the, the, the badge, the SP, SPD badge, is supposed to be bigger than the actual line than the actual five Mm -hmm. and basically it's fitting like right inside the five (laughs) 
So I I'm see. just like, I don't know about that. Mm, that I, that's a choice. I mean, I wouldn't have done that. That's a choice. Um, and like my other thing is. I just can't deal with this energy that is coming from his hands. And some of these pictures, I promise you, it looks like he's like playing with slime or something. <laughs> oh, it's the exact same thing. Oh my wow. gosh. Like, I'm not sure how I feel about this random looking. I was going to call them like crystals are leaving his body, but I know what it is. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't look. Uh, the only no, thing that especially. I, in, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I'm just gonna say the only thing that. <laughs> go ahead. Go. 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 No. Okay. No. The, I was gonna say the only thing that I because like I was looking at the picture with the um with him holding his hand down, and it really does look like he's like. Ivan Ooze or something like just like shooting some kind of like symbiote or something like that from his hands. Yeah. It looks weird. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> but no, <laughs> that, that was it. But go ahead, Will. What you gonna say? I, I was just gonna say I, the only thing that I really noticed um, was his, his morpher doesn't seem to be colored. No, no, it's not. Okay. She's not, um, she's not colored. Which, like, uh, that is kind of a. <laughs> that is kind of an important detail. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but, 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 it looks like the, um, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like his, the, the little, um, thing on the morpher, the, the, um, the thing he twists yeah. before he uses the morpher, it looks like that moves. Really? The handle. Yeah. The That's handle That's dangerous. <laughs> Very That's dangerous. Kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah. It definitely moves. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is interesting. All right. Cool. So yeah, that's a choice that they made. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, so I mean I to be truthfully honest, I really, really, really uh, I, I, like honestly, to be truthfully honest. The Omega Ranger is my favorite one of the new releases. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I, I think he looks pretty doggone good. I, I enjoy him. It's what do you guys think? For me, it's a pass for me. Pass. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's it's a beautiful figure, and they actually have his um his unicycle thing. The name is escaping me. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> figure. <laughs> a lot of detail, a lot of um accessories. Um, I I appreciate it for sure. But would you get it? I'm probably not going to get it <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't the biggest fan of that character. I don't know. I think it was because he didn't have an actual human form that we met until like the end of the season like oh, literally no, exactly the last episode and um yeah which is also why i'm surprised they chose to make him out of all the other rangers or even like um even like um the other um allies like they could have made doggy cougar well i know that we already have one or they could have did cat mm. um mm. You know, I would have loved that. That's one I would have wanted. Right? Well, what, yeah, Give one of the cat. core, one of the core five. I'm surprised they yeah. haven't done Bridge, who's been like super popular with yeah. the Ranger community forever, and, like, or Sky. Yeah. Well, or they did Jack. They did Jack. They yeah. They did Jack. Yes. Yeah. They did him, but I'm just surprised that they haven't done all the other uh, Rangers. Bridge or Sky, in particular. True. Yeah. True. Or like, even if they wanted to, like have someone that um was an ally but was it like well wasn't a complete ally but you know that um that really annoying what's his name oh, he, 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 yes he but not so not annoying but also not him oh no not him the guy who eats garbage uh piggy no piggy was this name piggy? piggy mystic force no 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 that was phineas 
Piggy is yeah, that was Phineas. No, I'm not oh, about- Piggy was the, the, the scaly thing. Alien. Yeah, who was living in trash. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about him being a little. I don't know about that. No, that was no. What I'm saying is like, <laughs> what I'm saying is like if they were going to make a character, because I feel like Omega Ranger, like he, to me, I feel like Piggy, is that his name? Piggy? Piggy, like yeah. Piggy yes, made more of a right made more impression than omega ranger i like oh, I'm okay saying, I can like i just feel like that. if you're gonna like you know make it omega rangers they, they could have gone with any other character like even i would even I go as far as like piggy you know and i'm not even like a big fan of piggy but <laughs> i was always mad at him that he sold them out the way he did I got, oh I my god i was so annoyed with him. him oh listen i have no like for me, it's just kind of like yeah. whatever. <laughs> like I mean, I like I said, give me cat minks and I'm happy. But yeah. as far as like mm-hmm. you know, Omega, like here's the, for me, Omega. I, as far as design and everything, I love it. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, the the design, the unicycle, all of that good stuff. I like it. I'm not gonna lie to you, I like that. But as far <laughs> there's just certain things that I'm just like, you know somebody gonna get it and be like, let me go ahead and color this in. Let me go ahead and uh, sure, for sure. make this a little smaller. Let me go ahead and, <laughs> you know, they're gonna doctor it up and they're gonna make it look fabulous. So that's why I'm just kind of like, um, I like it, but I also like what people are gonna do to it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just kind of like, all right, cool. I mean, it, it's all right. So that that I guess that's my my, my feeling on it. Yeah, you um you saying that that reminds me of um oh my goodness uh on Instagram's uh it was a Zelo 1984 they did the um they did the update not updates but they customized the civilian heads on um. Mm. I collection figures and they look so much better. Um so uh, much Billy better. and Trini. Oh my goodness. And Tr- mm-hmm. I thought that Trini looked great, but damn. I mean, they made her literally look like Tweet. Like, I mean, yeah. literally. Like yeah. it was like you could put a picture beside that figure's face and you would literally go, Oh my god, like that is a split image of Tweet. Those people needs to be hired by Hasbro. Like, uh, now. Seriously. Now. Like, those people need to get a good job. Like, come on. Give the fans what they really want and actually pay real tribute to the actors and actresses. Mm. Not make them look like golden girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's, oh, Ooh. man. That, those are beautiful. Like, I can't wait to see what they do with... Um, with the other figures that come out, I can't. I can't wait for us to finally get the the Stone Canyon trio. About oh, damn time we got them. That's what they need to do. They need to go ahead and give us, you know, Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. I mean, they gave us Rocky with Zio, and I mean, I've seen people like kind of like, you know, swap his head out with red and stuff like that. I, I you know, but mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I need. Adam and Aisha in my life. I need them because, especially Aisha. I need Aisha. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I need Karen Ashley. I, like, Black Girl Magic. I need her. Um, and that, that's just the bottom line. Like, I, Hasbro, you got work to do. Chop, chop. Let's do this. Um, <laughs> Now, Will, I know that you said that, um, you know, we were talking, you know, before the actual episode and everything, you wanted to talk about the comics. So you just finished reading Go Go. What do you think? I loved it. Um, I love the way that um, that Ryan Parrott, um, he was able to make the very end of Go Go correlate with the beginning of um, the Mighty Morphin for the uh, the Mighty Morphin Mighty Morphin for the Necessary Evil arc. So when we end this issue, we have the Stone Canyon Trio 
come onto the team and we see the the tension right away just like we do at the uh, beginning of Mighty Morphin. So that's really cool. And they did what they continue to do. Uh, what they've done with this whole series is they add nuance and little details to the stories that we got. So we got to um, actually see Rocky, Adam, and Aisha anticipating becoming Rangers. They, they already know that they've been chosen, but we get to see them like the day before the um the power transfer then we get to see the uh the original three that leave they are um you know like they're all feeling real guilty about leaving and lying <laughs> so um oh that's that's really cool to see too um tommy and jason have a moment and J uh, Tommy really gives it to Jason because he feels like he's just leaving them when they need them the most. So there's tension there that we didn't get on the show. Good. Um, mm -hmm. um, it, oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> there was a part where um, all the Rangers are training. They're training with the, with the new Rangers. And... Rocky, Adam, and Aisha are making all these jokes about um, the monster that they're <laughs> that they're fighting. They're they're fighting I I guy, and um, uh, they're making corny uh, eye jokes. And then Tommy stops the simulation, <laughs> and then Kimberly yells at all of them. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's so much fun. Which and personally, I felt some type of way about because that was the beginning of the that was beginning of where we got with um with mighty morphin um mm -hmm. necessary evil um that was that was the beginning of that and i personally was just like oh so this is to develop tension between kimberly and aisha because all before all through this you know, this episode, Kim, like Aisha was just a smiling and she was just a right. happy and <laughs> all of that. And then, like, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Kimberly go and she starts snapping and all of a sudden Aisha just starts to slowly change. And it's like, yeah. mm, this is where it begins. So, I mean, honestly, it's like you can't help but not like because of the way that, I, and and I like the way they 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 did this because they really made you, they really informed the character of like how like kind of made you see it from like a different point of view points of views because it was obvious that Kimberly was feeling some type of way about the fact that her best friend Trini is no longer there. Yeah. And apparently she's like the youngest one of the group. I thought it was Billy, but apparently it's Kimberly. She's the youngest one. So she was taking more of like the immature, like I'm taking my, my anger out on you guys type of situation. And she's yelling at them for making corny jokes while they're fighting. But I'm like, girl, for like 50 some odd issues before we got here <laughs> you were making jokes like out the ass like whenever y'all would fight you know and now you're mad that these three are doing it like girl get a grip and get over it stop it you know what i'm saying but of course they didn't know that because they're not a part of the team so of course they didn't know that you know all of that was happening and you know they didn't understand you know that they were coming into a family that already existed but still it's not for Kimberly to come at her, come at them the way that she did. She was definitely out of line. And the fact that nobody checked her is like, oh no, honey. Like, seriously? <laughs> like, I, I'm looking at Tommy and Billy some kind of way because Tommy's just kind of playing the role of like, yeah, you guys, you know, you'll get better eventually. Kind of like trying to be the, you know, the mediator. Billy is just all, you know, jerking off somewhere, just like looking crazy. Oh. And, <laughs> and growing a mullet. And you got Kimberly oh, being my a complete God. asshole. And it's like, that's not fair to the new group. Like, 
It's like somebody should have checked her. Like seriously, somebody should have like either Billy or Tommy should have pulled her to the side and been like, "Yo, this ain't cool. Like, why why are you treating them like this?" You know what I'm saying? But as we saw going into the beginning of Necessary Evil in the Mighty Morphin comics, we saw her, you know, treating them like crap. So it's obvious that nobody said anything. And it's just like, um, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that because you're talking to the minorities. You're treating the minorities like crap. <laughs> crap I forgot all three of them are minorities. All I three forget of them are minorities. <laughs> and you got this white woman talking to them like crap. <laughs> mm. And it's like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, so, you know, like... I don't know. Like I said, I get from a story standpoint, I understand, you know, from how they're trying to tell a story because it's basically, a, in other words, it's hurt people hurt people. Kimberly was definitely hurt. She was in her feelings and she's taking it out on them. But somebody should have stood up and said, hey, Kimberly, you're doing too much, sis. Calm the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody should have said something and nobody stood up for them. Nobody stood up for the new kids. Um, so that was kind of like, even Zordon. Like even Zordon didn't like, you know, be like, yo, girl, like, why are you treating them like this? Like, nobody said anything. I guess that's, like, my, my issue with it, is that nobody said anything to, to Kimberly, like, at all. Um, so, yeah, like, that's my judge. But, I mean, I definitely loved the, um, I, I loved how everything panned together. Um, I definitely, like, my, my, my favorite thing about this comment just as a whole, because now since GoGo is ending, one of the things that I loved about GoGo, and, I, and I've said this before, and I think you guys disagree with me, but <laughs> I love the fact that they look like anime characters to me. Like, they're, like mm. the way they look, they look very anime-ish to me. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I, I love it. Like, I, I, think, I think they look amazing. Um, now, one of the things that I, I thought that was kind of funny was that Aisha was definitely, you know, whoever, the artist who was drawing them definitely drew Aisha as Trini. She was just a black Trini. That's all. <laughs> like, straight up. She was a black Trini. For, um, for Gogo? Yes. Really? I'm not talking about What's facial that? wise. I'm not talking about facial wise. I'm talking about body type. Okay. Because body wise, Whole girl was tall and slender, just like Trini. Because Kimberly was looking up at Aisha. Well, I noticed that. I noticed that. Yeah. And I'm like, why is she looking up at Aisha? Because like her and her and Kimberly are like literally eye to eye. Like they look. Actually, like, I, I remember actually, Kimberly Aisha being down shorter. At Aisha. Yeah, yeah, she's tiny. Aisha is tiny. Like Aisha is shorter than Kimberly, so it's like. In actuality, she should have been looking down at Aisha. <laughs> but it's like Aisha was looking down at Kimberly, and I'm like, this don't make sense. Like, why is, why does, no, no. But in Mighty Morphin, in the comics Mighty Morphin, like, it looked like it's more drawn to scale. Like, it looked mm-hmm. like it makes a lot more sense. And plus, like, Aisha's body type there looks very similar to how she does in the TV show. So that's why I'm just kind of like, I felt like the artist just kind of just made her Trini 2.0, but just gave her a black face <laughs> and was just like, all right, cool. Like, did she coming in towards the end anyway? We don't have to be too picky with her. Let's just go ahead and throw her in there. Um, <laughs> and that's oh, basically wow. it. Like, I mean, that's just how I, how I see it. Because I mean, I'm just like, they don't, they, don't look, they don't look accurate. Like, as far as like mm-hmm. body type wise, they're not accurate. Um, but then again, I mean, Zach is like tall and beefy as fuck, and Jason is like <laughs> is athletic and slender, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. how is that? Like, clearly, mm-hmm. Jason was taller and way bigger than ja- than Zach, but mm-hmm. okay. Um, but I don't know. So I mean, you know, this is the this is the comic, obviously. But um, but I, I I did find those things a little like hmm this is interesting, mm-hmm. um, but yeah like I I, I enjoy I, I, I really enjoy I really enjoyed it and I I actually 
I do like the art in Gogo better than Mighty Morphin. I, I like um I like that they did look like young kids in Gogo and Mighty Morphin in particular mm -hmm. during the necessary evil art. They look kinda old. <laughs> um They did. They look weathered. Yeah. And I like I like, um, I'm tired, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way that Aisha look. I l actually love the way that Aisha looks, at least facially, in Go Go compared to, and her hair compared to <laughs> Mighty Morphin. So, um, listen. Mm. I could not tell what her hair was in Go Go, though. Were they braids or was her hair? They were like, braids. Yeah. Those were braids? Yeah. Child, I could I see exactly the the um the hairstyle they were going for. Child, I, I couldn't. I'm sorry. Her wearing I, that big ass hairband though wasn't really that. That mis that must be what it was. It must have been the hairband because I'm just the, like I promise you I was confused. I was like, <laughs> how was her hair supposed to be? I, I I know they might be braids, but maybe her hair is like a fro in a ponytail. I'm. Oh my hmm. goodness. I was I was confused. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was confused. But I mean, I like I I thought that maybe they would have done like you know I mean I understand they wanted to do the whole braid thing you know because that was Aisha's that was Aisha's jam, but well, she didn't have braids when she first got there. Okay, she didn't. She had her hair out. You know what I'm saying? Rocking the rocking the little rocking the little wrap. You know what I'm saying? Like she was rocking it. She was rocking a doobie wrap. Like they could have gave her, you know, a cute little ponytail. You know, with her, with her, with her hair out. You know what I'm saying? With, with the bangs. You know, mm -hmm. could have gave her something. Give her a little headband. I don't know, but I guess they were just like, you know, we trying to keep it, you know, cute. Trying to keep it, you know, in line with the comic, with the MMPR comic. Cool, mm -hmm. whatever. But yeah, I, I agree. Gogo -Go was great. I, I I have no complaints. I I actually love Gogo. -Go. I'm mad that it that it ended because, I, like I said, I I love the art there more than I like the art in in Mighty Morphin. No Tino shade to to the to the artist at all. But I just I'm a fan of things more brighter and more anim and more anime ish, mm -hmm. if that's even a word. Um, I'm just a fan of that that style more. And like it just it just it nailed it for me, so I loved it. But yeah, I'm glad that you that you finally that you finally read it, and uh, <laughs> you finally finished. And uh, yeah, now we can you know get on up to the. Did you, how how far did you get with um, Mighty Morphin? I have um, the last or the most recent two issues to read, and then. Uh, the 15th, uh, 51 comes out. Right. Okay. So. All right. Well, I'll be definitely looking forward to hearing what you got to say about that. Yeah. And, and then I'm, I'm I, yeah, I'm wondering where they're going to go next. Um, could they haven't, yeah, like I, I, sh I would have known if they mentioned something about what, the next arc, but they, they haven't yet. Mm -mm. No, um, they haven't said anything. They just left them on the cliffhanger. For you know what happened as far as the end of Mighty Morphin. So, mm -hmm. do you have but, any? Um, do you have a a want or or anything like that you want to see them do next? Since we know, well, I don't want to spoil it. Well, do you know what happened at the end of um the gist of what happened at the end of, of Mighty Morphin? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind then, because I don't want to spoil it. Um, but there is a certain, there's a character that comes back. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, actually there's a couple characters that come back at the end of Cause I know, I know, I already know that Ranger Slayer comes back cause she was, like, yeah. she was on the cover of what, what, 48, I think. Right, right, right. I think she was, I think she was. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, a couple characters well, come back. I yeah, so I'm so I just need to read like, this when I get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't I don't want to say what I want because it's gonna definitely correlate with the ending that you haven't right. read yet. So I, I just don't want right. to spoil it for you. 
Well, we'll um, get on that later. later. So go ahead and read those, and then next episode, because we did, we did, we got some stuff to cover. But next episode, right. <laughs> um, for sure, we can. I can definitely, you know, I'll let you know exactly what I think or what I wish would would come out next. Alrighty. But um, but yeah, going to this last topic, y'all. This baby, <laughs> what y'all? So <laughs> this last topic, y'all. So Seamus Kelly, um, the writer for Den of Geek, also um, he is one of the co-hosts for No Pink Spandex, um, which is also our friends as well. Um, he basically had an interview with our brand new showrunner, Mr. Simon Bennett. And baby, 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 baby. Y'all, if y'all ain't read this article, just go to Den of Geek and type in New Power Ranger Showrunner Reveals Dino Fury Plans and get your life. Get your life. A lot of fans had a lot of questions. A lot of fans had a lot of questions about the future of the show since Austin St. John basically said on the panel, you know, Judd Lynn is basically being like, deuces, I'm out. (laughs) Um... You know, <laughs> so it, it's just kind of been like, all right, what's going to happen next? Who's going to be the next showrunner? Um, you know, where are we going with this? What's going to happen next? Well, basically, surprisingly, Simon just was like, you know what? I'm all ears. Let's do this. Let's talk. Cool. All right. We got questions, you got answers. Radio Shack, let's do this. So basically, you know, you asked them, um, uh, one of the questions that um that um Seamus asked him um was how did how did he even get the role of Power Rangers as the um as the showrunner, right? Simon basically was like, I didn't make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> he worked on there as a director and as a director for Ninja Steel and Beast Morphers. And he was approached. He, they just kind of just like tapped him on the shoulder. I'm paraphrasing here. Just tapped him on the shoulder and asked if he'd be interested. And he was like, sure. Um, now, basically from what he said, um, you know, they've they basically just asked him, he, you know, he's doing it. And it being a director is a lot different as far as like, you know, you know, um, actually controlling the show because the director, the only thing the director does is he gets the script, looks at it goes, Oh, this is what I can do. This is what I can't do. Oh my gosh. All right. We got to figure this out. And you know, they shoot it bing, bam, boom. We get what we get. But the executive producer actually has more of an idea as far as, like, forming the show, forming the theme, and, you know, that sort of thing. And you guys, as far as that is concerned, what do you guys think about him so far? Because he definitely has done a couple of episodes as far as directing. Um, what did you think about his style? Like, as far as, um, as far as like the shots and the camera angles and things of that nature. Cause he did do, um, cause I'm, cause he did do the, um, the episode, um, Dimensions in Danger. Um, he did Game On, which came out here, I believe already. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Game On already came out. Um, as far as for, um, Beast Morphers. Um, and he's done a couple of other episodes too. So like he's done some things. What do you think about his directing style? Um, (laughs) (laughs) well, I, um, I enjoyed the, uh, I guess I'm kind of in a minority. I enjoyed the dimensions in danger episode, um, from the the stuff that we could see that was uh, filmed in in New Zealand that wasn't the Sentai footage, I I liked. Um, oh yeah. Um, oh, I loved that fight scene that they 
in the uncut version, I love the the fight scene where uh, Tommy used the Master Morpher to fight the um, the clone Tommy. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I like that, the, that even though, though that yeah was good. That was yeah. good. Like that, yeah. Even the, even the ending fight scene, right? The actual fight scene all together with yeah. all the other Rangers. And, I thought that yeah. was great. And like the yeah the Zord, even though oh, the Zord right. thing was kind of definitely cheap, I still like that too. Lame. Um, Lame. Um, I like the the Falcon. <laughs> the fact that we got the Falcon Zord again after all these years, I did not expect that. And then the fact that they used the Falcon <laughs> Sword to get the, the the arrow to stop the the dimensions from being destroyed. I like that. But um what else was there? Uh, <laughs> was game one the one with the with the with the girl gamer who was trying to make money yes. for her, her brother? I liked mm-hmm. parts of that episode. Um it, it yeah, definitely like, could have been better. Well, I mean, that, that should be the tagline of Beast Morphers, okay? That should be the tagline of Beast Morphers. It could have been better. But, um, yeah, like, I feel like if he can, if he was just directing what the showrunners were, were doing, I think that he did the best that he could do. If he yeah. has any, if he has any, um, if he knows what the fans want, if he's really cognizant of the fact that the fan base is more than four year olds, which I believe he is, then hopefully he does some things that um, don't make us embarrassed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> from the from the inter- from the interview that I got, like we, we talked about this, um, we talked about this in the group chat, like when it first came out. For me personally, like you had your feelings on it, but for me personally, like what I got from the interview was he just couldn't say a lot. So he he just kind of hmm. gave those blanketed answers where, right, you know, like he can't really answer too much. But um, I wasn't I wasn't offended by the interview. Um, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Like I. Same here. Like, I, I wasn't offended by it, but there were certain things that I was definitely triggered by. Mm-hmm. That I was like, mm, what is this? You know? Um, there, there were a couple things that I was like, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh boy. One of the things that kind of got me was when, they at, when the question was asked, is Chip Lynn still going to be working on the show? And he was like, basically, yeah. Um, that was one of the things that I was just kind of like, mm, I thought you were going. Ugh. You know, now, so. now it's just it's a um, it's a consulting role, right? Or is it an actual? Well, it more. I, it may be more. It may be more because basically, what kind what kind of happened was originally, I think it was supposed to be a consulting role, going by the interview. Um, I feel like originally it was supposed to be, but when COVID happened, when COVID was like, hey girl, um, <laughs> he couldn't travel back and forth from New Zealand to Los Angeles anymore. So basically what happened was it was no longer a situation where he could be like, hey, I'm just like helping you with this. I think now it's become more so kind of like, he's working together with him. Like, I, I, I honestly believe that Chip will have, like, an actual EP credit at this point because he's mm-hmm. still helping Simon come up with the show. Mm-hmm. Like, he's actually helping him. So, I definitely, yeah, I definitely think he's going to have EP credit, for sure. Okay, well, I can so, see why you're upset by that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like... <sighs> and, and I'm just like... <sighs> Not, not, not to say that, you know, Chilp is horrible. Like, I, I have my feelings, but he's, he has decent ideas. Like, he has really, de- he has decent ideas. 
that is like, oh, okay, this, this is cool. Um, and, you know, I, I, I give him that for sure. Um, I guess for me, it's just like, I want to see what someone else can do. I want to see what fresh yeah. eyes can do, you know, right. um, and what somebody with, you know, fresh eyes and a fresh, you know, fresh outlook on it. I want to see what happens with that because mm-hmm. like Chip is very like formula, formulized. Is, I don't know if that's even a word, but um, he's very like used to the game. Like it's like, okay, um, this is my ebb and flow. This LA, is what I'm correct. used to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much exactly what it is. And it's like, all right, we get it. We get you are, you know, you are like, you've been in the game, you're true to the game, like, we get it. But what can fresh eyes bring to the table that will make mm-hmm. that will make things a little bit better? Mm-hmm. You know, and give it more of a fresh outlook. It, it's know? always fascinating when I think back, like he did he did uh, Lost Galaxy and Lightspeed, right? Yes. So those were seasons where they started to... I got Space, too. I'm not sure if he did Space, but um, he did seasons that they were in that time period where they started to kind of evolve and, and grow a bit more. You know, still a kid show, but they were taking some risks and doing things with with uh, villain characters and the ranger characters that they hadn't really done before. It was a nice progression of where the series started. It kept, you know, evolving. So I, it's it's confusing why since he's been back, you know, it's 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 <laughs> it feels like it's devolved or regressed <laughs> um, to, to really um, to really like look like a low IQ level <laughs> like like it's, it, I don't understand that when you've you've done some cool things in the past but like what you've given us is like you think that that's quality work or you think that that's something that the adult fans will want to watch like there's some kids that are ashamed of, to say that they watch Power Rangers and you just continue to give them reasons to have that opinion. I mean, um, this is the same guy who was over the season that had an episode where the black girl was being harassed by a school mm-hmm, resource officer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who completely overtook his overtook his job way too seriously, but also gave two white kids his same abilities with that job and they went ahead and they completely just messed up the responsibility and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and overstepped his power. So, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a, pretty much kind of like a clear cut version of what happens in real life. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, not really too keen on what they're doing in New Zealand, but, um, yeah, I mean, listen. I don't know what the what the tea is with with Judd. I I, I don't know. I I don't know what goes on in their writing room. Uh, apparently, according to this article, they get into the writing room. They, they were actually developing this season since they finished. Well, they develop they were developing um, Dino Fury, like actually time they finished filming Beast Morphers. Like they were already developing Dino Fury, and I'm like, if you're if you've been developing Dino Fury that fast, and if, if say say for example if you're doing that for every season and you're like developing them like time you finish you know shooting this and doing that you're developing a new season, if that's the case, then how come these episodes don't feel polished? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there, a lot of, a lot of these episodes feel like first drafts. They feel like, you know, if you could have ran them through another edit, like, I mean, really critiqued them and was like, you know what, let's go through this again. And then like go through the first, go through the first draft, then go through the second draft. Maybe hell, maybe even give them a third draft. Like they would make more sense. They'd flow better. They'd have a lot more, 
they make more sense versus what we actually get where they just don't seem to make sense at all and they just feel rushed. So I'm not exactly sure if that happened with Beast Morphers. Um, it could have been a situation where, you know, Beast Morphers, they, because that, that was, Beast Morphers is a transitional season. So it easily could have been a situation where, you know, perhaps maybe they didn't have the time. You know, with the transition and everything, they just didn't have the time. And they're just like, let's just go ahead and throw this together. Because um, some of the episodes felt very thrown together. Um, so I, I don't know. But, you know, that's just the way it, that's just the way it feels. Um, Lena, what do you think? I'm just going to keep it short and simple. I'm not impressed until I will be impressed. And I don't remember any of the episodes he directed because they weren't memorable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> she said that. Um, <laughs> well, she said that, yo. <laughs> Lena, hell, Lena had spoken. She said, uh, I ain't got time. Uh, <laughs> no. No. Show me something. Show me hmm. something. That makes me go, oh, damn. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, girl, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, the episodes that we mentioned, <laughs> they're not it. But <laughs> no? no? They're not it. But, um, nope. oh, but if you, listen, if you look at uh, Beast Morphers Season 2, he, de- he definitely didn't direct uh, the last, last couple of episodes. Okay. And they were actually really good. They were very good episodes. So um, well, I will so come back they, to my opinions when when I yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but no, like and and then like okay, so he so basically Judd is um he's kind of like helping out um which that has been confirmed. <clears throat> so for everybody in listening, you know, it's like I'm pretty sure people are like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, Judd is still here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one of the things that um, that really kind of got to me well, well not got to me but one of the things that I noticed um, was when he was talking about um, it was when they were talking about how you know the show first of all I didn't know that the show was made for between two to six year olds that I did not know. I thought with the age, the age. Have you bit watched higher. the show? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. Uh, li- that's the question. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought that the show was like for three and up. I honestly, but the show is for three uh, to six yo, year olds. Like to be to be real with you, I like since I was a kid. Honestly, since we were kids, since it was on, I honestly felt that it was marketed towards kids that young the fact that um i don't know like it, it, it almost seemed like it was a um like a stigma because it always felt like by the time i was in like first grade six years old i got clown for still like your power rangers mm. <laughs> and i'm like i'm six i'm young and i didn't i didn't fall out of love with power rangers until i was like 10 10 or 11 so it always felt like something that was supposed to be for a kid that young despite the fact that when you watch the show it did kind of evolve but it seemed like it was still marketed to that really young demographic and I never understood I especially as I got older I didn't understand that because the show evolved and then you also look at how successful the other superhero genres are and they they um they cater to older a little bit older kids and this is something that i've talked about on the show before it just says like i don't understand that because you can still make money off of older kids as we've seen with marvel dc and and transformers and all this other stuff right (sighs) Yeah, I yeah. Um, I, I guess that's like my my thing too. It's like for me, and I mean, he he did he did mention that you know it's tricky 
because of course they have that demographic that they have to you know work around but also at the same time they they want to try to you know remain loyal to and reward the, the the fans the audience you know who are our age um and i'm paraphrasing but, mm-hmm. you know, basically he, he's saying that, you know, the writers, you know, are trying to, you know, do that for everybody and, you know, stuff like that. But for me, I, I don't know, like, there's a way of being mindful. And, and, and this is just like a, a note for me personally, because I'm an act, like, I'm an actual actor, like, you know, re, like actual interpreting scripts and performing is what I do. There's a way of writing things that make characters feel young, but they still feel current. Mm -hmm. You can make, you can make a certain character feel a certain way and say certain things. And they sound like a person of today's era. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For some strange reason, these kids talk, like they are still stuck in 1995. That's the problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Becca Barnes and Allendale are like our age. So why are they talking? Why are these characters talking like they're these, oh my God, ah, like they just, it's just something. They don't sound like people. And for one, they sound the same. They all kind of sound the same. And there's no cultural references. And I understand the show doesn't see race. Obviously, we know that. But these characters don't feel different. There, there is something about the way... If you look at Mighty Morphin back in the day, better yet, Zio. Zio, my favorite season, right? Everybody had voices. Everybody had a specific tone, a specific way that these characters said something. You knew when Rocky spoke. You knew when Tanya spoke. You knew when Tommy said something. Like, you, you knew the different voices. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, and this, this is just me, but I feel like these characters and, and the way they're writing the show now, anybody could say their lines. Any ranger could literally say whatever lines that they're saying and it would and the story would still flow and make perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Like no character sounds specific to that character. Like there's nothing that is specific to that character, with the exception of maybe Steel. But for the most part, Everyone pretty much sounds the same. Hell, look at RPM. Everybody sounded different on RPM. Like, it was just like, it was so many personalities. Right. And, you, like, you, everybody had a voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now, these characters, the way they're writing these characters now, and, and I mean, this, of course, the show was still targeted towards a younger audience. Mm-hmm. But they still wrote it in a way that things make sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I just feel like, I understand that there's many hands in the pot, as, as, he, as he alluded. He alluded to, you know, there's many, you know, people that, you know, say there's certain things they have to go through, certain, certain avenues they have to do, they have to talk to this person, they have to make sure to talk to this person and blah, blah, blah. All that is understandable. However, it's like either we need some people of color behind, behind in, these, in these roles or <laughs> something. Like we need people that are going to be able to understand the show where it was and, you know, kind of like at least making these characters feel like characters instead of just making them feel like just puzzle pieces where anybody can pick up this, pick up the puzzle, pick up the, uh, not puzzle pieces, chess pieces, where anybody can pick up the, <clears throat> the chess item and put it to, you know, the next move 
and go, you know, here's what it is. It just doesn't feel like, oh, okay, this is a, this is a show. I mean, sometimes it does. And sometimes it's like, what are we, what are we doing here? I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, do y'all agree? Like, how, how y'all feel? 100% agree with what you're saying. 100%. I mean, when, when um, Saban bought it back, it all kind of went downhill in terms of script writing, how they spoke. They, they sounded like they're children. Yeah. And they're not relatable to us. We don't. We even talk like that when we were kids. Yeah, I know I didn't. So nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sound nothing like that. Right? I was like, uh, all right. Yeah. But of no, course, I, also too, they live in Pleasantville, so there's that. Oh, no, I agree with you. I keep it short and simple today. It's very. I don't have the energy to fight all this unnecessariness <laughs> that's how i feel like it's i just i it's funny because like when beast morpher came around we had such great hope then you know what they did sound a lot better but oh yeah for sure absolutely they sounded a lot better they didn't sound like ninja steel oh my god ninja steel i was poking my eyes out like the the stuff that they're stating was the obvious oh brody i think we should morph now Good thinking. I think I should work now too. Really? <laughs> really? Really, guys? Okay. All right. I guess we're going to do that. You know, so, so Beast Morpher definitely sound a lot better. So I'm hoping that for this new season, they sound a little bit more grown up with actual proper words. Because I can't <laughs> think of any kids that actually spoke like that. Some of the stuff I hear kids come, like that comes out of kids' mouth. I'm like, I don't even speak I mean, like with a child. Girl, there there's some things in this in 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 Beast Morphers that just had like some of the stuff they were saying just had my head had me just a scratching like scratching my head like what are, what is happening like who why are y'all talking like this what what is happening like right? I, I don't know like girl that's... <laughs> and then I, and I think it's even like. And I also think it's a little bit creepy too that like they have them talking like that, but then they try to form relationships out of it, you know? <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is so cringy. Oh, no. You know, like with the whole um, Zoe and Nate, you know? Like it's, I'm, I remember watching that being like, this is so cringy. Like they speak like that and now they're trying to be adults and have relationships. No, no. Not here for that. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know if it's just that I haven't been um, paying <laughs> that much attention, but th they really have them talk like like Kitty, in particular Zoe. She does. She does. Like I love her cast phrase, but the way they have her say it is, "I what was it? I don't run away from big problems. I fix big problems." Right, right, right. Like I think it's something like that. Yeah. Like something like that. Like even that phrase alone. It sounds very kidified. I'm sorry. Like, mm -hmm. as a grown adult, we don't go, I don't run away from... Like, I mean, actually. she is, in, her character is eight, like, probably very close to her actual age. 18, 20. Yeah, but do you remember speaking like that when you were 18 and 20? Because I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. Well, these are special people, okay? <laughs> these are special <laughs> people. I don't run away from big problems. I fix them. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I do not recall saying that at 20. It was more like, holy fuck, how do I fix this? Who do I need to call to fix this? Who can help me fix this? Yo, I'm going to be in so much trouble if I don't fix this. Like, it was never like, I'm going to fix this. I don't run away from big problems. I solve them. Like, or I don't, again, I don't know what the actual path face <laughs> the face is. <laughs> I'm sure we'll remember once we finally upload this episode, but I remember hearing that and it was cute the first time, but then it kept going and I'm like, okay, this is not cute no more because I don't actually recall 17 year old, 18 year old speaking like that. If anything, mm -hmm. 17 and 18 year old nowadays be speaking like they're adults. Mm -hmm. Not just nowadays. Always, but you know. Yeah. 
I mean, nowadays they they're they're all becoming Karens. Okay, I'm just saying. Ooh, child, don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so don't get me started. So I mean, you know, all of us has worked in set customer service, so we all know. Like these teenagers do not be speaking like Zoe does. They be speaking mm-hmm. like they're Karens. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, if you're trying to tell me, Will, that she spoke close to the actor's age, I'm not having it. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Girl. Listen. Listen. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I Listen. It's just, like I said, it, they need to stop with the games, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, hopefully, you know, and and I get it. Like I said, they, they have many hands that, there, there's a lot of hands in the cookie jar. So they have to appease everybody. I completely understand. However, can, yeah. you know, people kind of be like, I, can we just trust the writers? You know, like, I mean, they, they know what to do. You know what I'm saying? And just let them just, just go forth and be great. Like, why do we, what, what is going on? Like, who, there, there's just so many questions I have. Like, who are the big wigs? Why do they want certain things to be the way they are? These are all questions that I have because I, I, I feel like, do they know what live action children TV shows that they're up against, do they know what they look like? <laughs> And, and then this, this is a real question. Like, this is, like, a legit real question. Like, do they know what they look like? Do they know how they talk? Have they seen these shows? Do they, you know what I'm saying? Because I, cause the reason why I ask is because a lot of shows that are out right now, they talk like normal adults. They talk like people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't make sense how they're like, oh, you know, oh my God, this is a thing. We must protect the thing. We must fight the thing. Oh my gosh, you know? That, it, it, yeah, I, I think that that is a, le- a very legitimate question of what exactly, like, what is in their plan, in their checklist of what the Power Rangers series has to have, what it can't have. What scale right. are they they measure in this form? Because you can look at something like Young Justice is definitely definitely like their latest season was really more mature. But maybe like the first season, you can look at that. That was on Cartoon Network. Um, you can look at that, an animated series as something to look at of how to write for teenagers on a team together where you can relate to the different characters. You can understand they're not going to get along all the time. They're not perfect. They're not these goody two shoes. You know, like there's, there's some real life injected into them. And this is an animated series I'm talking about. And they can't do that on a live action series. I just don't understand... Right. Like, why do you have to do the same thing 20 years, over 20 years later? Like, who are these people that are these decision makers? Because I thought, I assumed that after Saban didn't have control of the series anymore, that it would change. But like, even, even like during the Disney times, there were certain things that they just couldn't do. Like, one of the biggest right. things is when you have a range of relationship, if we're able to have one, They never kiss each other. And it's like, you can see kissing on a cartoon. You see kissing on other live action um, children's series. Right. Like, that's not... Like, like, do they think... Do they really think that little boys are like, ew, girls, ew, kissing? Like, um, there's some kids like that, but not all are like that. It's not going to, like, totally freak them out, you know? I, I just, sure like, ain't. Because, child, on? I know I wasn't. Woo! Right? Kissing. Where my popcorn? Uh-huh. Oh, I was wow. 
And I'm I'm all in the I'm all in people face. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Child, especially when um when when Tommy and Kimberly had locked lips for the first time, I was like, and I ooh, I'm all in the all in the TV. Oh, ooh. Ah, forget Tommy <laughs> and Kimberly locked lips when Leo ripped off his shirt. How you how can you do that and you can't show kissing? <laughs> right, right. Like stripping. What? I mean, this man literally magic mic'd us. And like we did, we couldn't get kissing. <laughs> oh my god! Like he straight you magic. You had so does. many little. You had so many little little boys probably realizing what their sexuality was going to be in that <laughs> moment. But you can't I show one of them. You can't show kissing. Okay, I'm little boys. Oh my god! I just, uh, little girls that actually realize what they're really into. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, you know, and like they're pro- probably the moms watching. Oh shit, some of the dads watching. <laughs> okay, listen. Hmm. All right now. <laughs> so I, you I, already I, know. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. So I don't yeah, like. Okay. I just don't understand. Like I just don't get it. Like have some fun. Take some risk. It's okay. I mean, there, there's just so many. That, like I like I said. Like just going, just going, just based on the article alone, I, I could tell that Simon wants to do his best. Like re, re, reading from the article itself, I could definitely get the feeling that there was, there was plenty of things that he just could not say, but I definitely felt like he wanted to do his best. Like he wants to do his best. He wants to give, he wants to give us a good show. Um, one of the things that, um, one of the things that I, that, now this is one thing that really kind of bugged me. Um, now I'm not gonna say it bugged me. Let me, let me scratch that. I'm not gonna say it bugged me. But he definitely skated around the question on this one. Um, now he ba- they were basically talking about um, as far as there being you know representation as far as like different sexualities and gender um, fluidity in the Dino Fury characters um, because you know the previous question was talking about um, representation behind behind the camera. And everything, and he was saying that you know there's plenty of people of different um, sexualities, uh, races, and different creeds and things of that nature working behind the camera. Um, I don't see how that is possible because we're still getting episodes like the one that I described earlier from Ninja Steel. However, um, mm-hmm. you know he's saying that you know there are different you know cultures and different uh, races and sexualities that are working behind and uh, behind the camera. Now when Seamus mentioned to him, you know, will there be characters like that um, on the actual show itself? He goes, and I quote, because I'm, I'm reading this myself. I'm reading this quote for quote. Mm. <laughs> I think I would just have to say, watch and wait. I can't answer that question <laughs> because of confidential confidentiality issues. You just have to wait and see. Thought before I say what I have to say because I have to I have to get some things on my chest. I mean, I feel like if they're uh, um, equality is such a selling point these days that if we were going to have something like that, they probably would say it. Um, so the fact that he didn't makes me think we're we're probably not going to see that on at least not in the tv show anytime soon. i agree i feel like they're all lies so they're just trying to keep us uh quiet and at peace for now <laughs> i am of two minds i'm going to be saying this a lot on this episode oh, by the way i am of two minds <laughs> oh here we go <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I up. am of two minds. Just for the record, I'm not against him having two minds. I <laughs> am not. So y'all know, I'm not against him having two minds. <laughs> listen, 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 let go. Overall, my overall consensus is no. Overall, overall, mm-hmm. the overall consensus is no. It's not going to happen. But I'm of two minds of why it won't happen. First thing. First things first. From the writing standpoint of the show, the characters that they're writing right now are not even interesting characters, to mm-hmm. be honest. 
Not mm-hmm. talking about the acting, not talking about the actors who played them, but just the characters alone. They are not interesting characters from, from what we've gotten since Samurai to now. Majority of them have not been that interesting. No, you're not wrong there. Mm-hmm. So how can we expect them to write good, decent characters that, uh, that are gender non-conforming, um, LGBTQ+, plus, non-binary or anything like that without them being boring characters like we've already got. Mm-hmm. You're all, we're already expecting way too much of them when we already have, got, when we already have been getting the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. So I personally do not even want that kind of representation. I, like, I, it'll be so nice to, be, to see a gay or lesbian or bisexual ranger you know, on the show, you know, just being, just being a character, just being a character, being themselves and not even being bisexual or or whatever, not even letting that be the main focus of their character, Mm -hmm, but just mm -hmm. have them be a character who just happens to be LGBTQI plus. Mm -hmm. Like just have, like that, that can be a thing. Like literally have, I'm just gonna throw this out. I'm not. I'm not saying this person is or the character was, but have a character like a Ravi, who's having relationship issues with his mother and painting, but he's also bisexual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, have a character like that. I mean, like, like I said, that he's not. But you know that 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 part of him can just be that part of him, but it doesn't have to be the main you know, the main shablam, the main thing of the character. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It doesn't have to be that. Mm-hmm. But this show has proven that they can't really create great characters as of right now anyway. So why would I try to put on them, hey, create, you know, this kind of character with this kind of, you know, situation going on and try to make this into a developed character when they can barely do that anyway with a, with a straight character. Like, they can barely do it anyway. That's my first mind. My second mind is literally saying, just look at the 2017 movie. Mm-hmm. Look at the reactions from that. Fans lost their doggone minds when they found out a, a lot of those, you know, a lot of those boys, because they're not men, boys, <laughs> lost their minds, lost their horny minds when they found out, oh my God, sexy Becky G is going to be queer. What? Like, literally, their minds exploded. And I mean, literally, she didn't even say she was lesbian. She didn't say anything. She just said that she was battling how she felt. She didn't say how she, she didn't say what she was. Nope. Mm -hmm. All she said was, I'm confused. And people lost their shit. Like, legit, people went crazy. So it's like, I really don't even feel comfortable, honestly. Even even having the, a character like that in the show, just for the simple fact that you're literally going to get those those idiotic fans that still do not realize that hey, LGBTQI people exist in the world. Oh my God, they're a thing. We're not like fucking unicorns with fairy dust flying out our asses, just flying and flying around <laughs> in the clouds. <laughs> you know, like oh my gosh, they're not real. We are. We're here, obviously. So mm. it's not like we're, we're just these random magical creatures. We're here. We exist. So having a character who is of that is not strange. It's not, oh, my yeah. God, you're trying to force this down on me. Yeah. Because we yeah. can literally say the same thing about, straight, about straightness, about heteronormativity, heteronormativity. Normativity. Oh, my God, I can't get that out. But we can mm-hmm. say the same thing about that. Mm-hmm. And these same people, these same people have issues when they um, will have non-white characters or women, or women. Yes. So it's like, um, yeah, and it's it's it's, it's, to to go on what we're talking about. um, We're talking about uh, Trini's character in um, the movie. 
she like that was so small that was like a crumb you know yeah and 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 that like and people had the nerve to one of my friends said he was um his his uh his mom's boyfriend wasn't sure if he wanted to take his daughter to see the the movie because he heard that one of the rangers was gay and that that was all we got so and it's, it's crazy that um at this juncture at this point in time we get such such little tiny instances of it in um in in something like the power rangers movie there's a nickelodeon show i believe it's either nickelodeon or cartoon network one of them where they have they have a um a gay couple um a gay male couple and the only thing that they really showed was them coming to the door uh, to pick up their kid like something that's simple and it's just like so small because like they're they're kind of easing it into to uh i guess the more kids based media now right um and it's just it's just uh, it's so small that pe- and people are still complaining about that but like you go to work you you're bound to work with some gay people or or lesbians or or trans or at least one trans person like it's it's these people have always existed like this oh, I just went on a tangent it's just frustrating that this is still an issue and that like we we really like it's really that hard for you to just do something different like I I'm telling y'all I just don't have the energy for this today <laughs> so much you know so much. No, I but get it. You guys no. have said it all for me, so <laughs> I, I support your your answers. <laughs> no, and I mean, it's that that's, that's just my thing. It's just like I, it really just it boggles my mind when I see, you know, I, I'm I'm on, honestly in, in on this subject matter, Lena. I'm I'm actually like you. I'm just like, I don't have the bandwidth for it. I, I just don't. I don't have the energy um, because of just the way that I know things will be presented and Great. the way, because I, I feel like too, with, it, it's funny that Monty, Monty's character from Ninja, St- Ninja Steel, definitely Monty was a queen, honey. Monty was a whole queen. <laughs> and I lived. Monty was the best thing on Ninja Steel for me. Like, honestly. Like, he was the most memorable, best thing about the entire show, in my opinion. And the, the actor actually, like, said he, he believed that Monty was gay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he, yeah, I remember. Like, he um, tweeted about it. He was like, oh, yeah, Monty, definitely, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I love it. Love it. Love it. Because I'm just like, the way he played him, it was, it was so, it was so, it was, it was extra. It was hella extra, which I'm like, that's one thing I don't want to see from a ranger. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> unless that, unless he's meant to be that way. Unless he's meant to be Like, that way. um, like, um, oh my God, Davi. Uh, extra? Right. Sir Ivan, Sir Ivan. Ivan. Him and, uh, what's the other guy, um, from uh, Operation Overdrive? Was it Dax? Dax? Dax no, yeah. no, not that. No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, extra, the way though. that Ivan, the way that Ivan did the extra, for some reason that worked. <laughs> Dax did not work. Uh-uh. No, no, I thought no. Dax extra as hell. He was, and it was too much. <laughs> really? Yes. I yo, I have. Mm-mm. I don't want to go into my feelings on Dax right now. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> No, not right now. Oh, okay, fine. Listen, this just had me weak. He <laughs> said no. <laughs> if Will could have jumped through, jumped through and slapped me, just <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Listen, it's not that I disagree. But <laughs> I see what you're saying, Will. Like, I, I see the kind of, like, flamboyancy 
that as a ranger, what you would rather go for. And and, and honestly, yeah. like, if that's the kind of character they want to they want to have, and he be of you know LGBTQI plus, and have him play that way. I wouldn't I, that way. I wouldn't even be mad. Like that. That's the that 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 I would be like. Okay, that's fine. But also give him things. Give him things. Give him nuggets. Give him personality traits. Give him like a background story. Give him something to work off of. Don't let mm-hmm. that just be his crux to just be like. Okay, he's just known for being flamboyant, and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't have anything about him. He's just going to be another Gia who does absolutely nothing, and he's just there for 40 episodes. Oh, like, that Gia. is not what I want. Dad. That is not what I want. And I have the strangest feeling that that is what they would do to that character. Mm-hmm. Just to say, oh, we have an LGBTQI plus oh, character on the show. That is so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. And that's why I don't want it. Because I feel like that's what they would do. You know what I'm saying? They would do that exact thing just to say, oh, we have this character here. Mm-hmm. I, um, like, they would definitely use all the stereotypes, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh my for sure. God. For sure. I mean, this show breathes on stereotypes. So, I mean, I, I, would, I would not be surprised. Like, what would surprise me, honestly, on, honest to God, honest to God, what would surprise me on this show? is if they had a gay a gay character that was like a Dylan. <gasps> mm. Oh. Like using how tough and brooding and bad boy Dylan was, but mm-hmm. have him gay. Listen. That'd be something else. When I tell you I would be looking Hot. at the screen like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, what? Oh. I would be here for it. Listen, baby. And don't let him don't, don't let him have no ooh, no fine characters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't let him be fine. Like, all right now. Wow, what if it was all right, black? Power Rangers. Hmm. I see y'all. But of course, like I, I said, th- what if it was that. black? And black and fine, and he's like, listen, listen, my God, my God, my God. I'm trying to tell you (laughs) that would that would be like my my favorite Power Ranger season from then on out. Screw Zio, I don't even care. Like that would be, (laughs) (laughs) and we all know Zio is like my number one favorite season of all time. But screw Zio, if they did that. I'll be like, chow cheese, I don't care. This right here is it. This show could make all the wrong moves. They could literally do everything stupid, but it would still be my favorite season because of that exact thing. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Let them find let them put an old fine black brother and make him like Dylan and TPK. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ciao. But that's neither here or there. Like I said, that would never happen. But you never, hey, like, never, never, you never know because girl. things could change. <laughs> the world, the way this world is changing, yes, when exactly. we come out on the other side, who yeah. knows what's going to happen? Exactly. Like girl. you, you never know anymore because, like, with like, look how fast things have been changing. You know, like people have been changing street names. People are are getting rid of their certain names because it, you know has to do with certain things so it's just like you never know you never know Girl, never listen. say never listen. never say never i won't believe, I won't believe it her. until i see it for myself <laughs> i won't believe it till i see it because <laughs> when i tell you <laughs> i don't believe it i i listen like I said, we got baby steps to do. At least let them <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. I mean, we still we still have to make good characters first. Let them make good characters first, and then we can start looking at okay, we gonna you know create characters that actually make sense, that actually feel like people. Then it's like I I I right, let let let's bring these people in. But other than that, child, I don't know. I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, uh, that was just one of the things that I, I, I saw on that, that article. One of the things that just really just stuck out for me was, was that. Because I just feel like, I just don't feel like the show nor the fandom is ready for it. Um, but should they actually do it? If they're going to do it, do it right. Mm-hmm. And if they're going to do, like I said, if they're going to do it, do it right. And also make that carrot. Like, I feel like if they were to do that character and make them into like a, make them like a badass, I feel like, you know, people will come around and do it. I mean, of course, you still obviously want to have those, those fans that are like, I mean, gang, he's some LGBTQ, oh my God, he's gay, oh my God. <laughs> like, I mean, of course, you're still going to have them. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yes, I yes I made them sound like idiots. I know, but they are. Um, <laughs> but you know, at, on the same token, I definitely think that you know, if you make them, if you make them a good character, I think that people will enjoy them. Um, and yeah, I mean, case in point, case in point, and and this is a fan fiction. But unworthy. Power Rangers unworthy. Like, literally, the Pink Ranger is a straight-on lesbian with the Green Ranger. Yeah. And when she got killed off, people were in the comment section like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, people were, like, losing their minds because the characters were written so well. And people felt something for him, even though the show only had like three episodes up to that point. Like <laughs> people felt mm-hmm. something, like because it was written well. So it's like if something is written well and something is done and is and it's done right, I really feel like you could really and you humanize these characters, you could really create some great stuff. You could really do some great stuff. And I just feel like Power Rangers has some work to do when it comes to that. Like, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like where I am. Um, now, I did want to bring up one more thing from the article. Um, and it was the part where he basically talked about um, how... The, the question is, in terms of Dino Fury, what, what do you plan to bring to Power Rangers that's different from before? Basically, I'm going to take an excerpt from this. He basically says, um, in terms of what I intend to bring to the show, you know, there are a lot of overlords to someone in my position. I don't have the carte blanche to, to be able to say, but say, say, okay, let's make the show unique, different in my vision. That's not the way television works. Um, dot, 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 dot. And I certainly wouldn't go into this wanting to reinvent the wheel or rock the boat. For me personally. <laughs> that was the part, that was one of the things that made me go, oh shit, we getting more of the same. We're getting more of the same. <laughs> um, which I can understand after, after sitting down and thinking about it. I can understand it. I understand because he's coming in as a new person He's still working with Judd Lynn. So he, he's just basically trying to learn the ropes and be like, okay, this is what we're doing. This is how the show needs to be ran, blah, 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 blah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the way he develops these characters and the way that he's de- he develops this show is in a way that isn't insulting to anyone's intellect or anyone's you know um to anyone who is watching it however the whole idea of him just not wanting to rock the boat or anything like that because because there's so many hands in the pot because that's basically kind of what happened with eddie gazellian and rpm Mm -hmm. But the thing was with Eddie Gazellian was that he was he didn't know how to develop the show at the time, and they ended up going over time and budget, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why they had to call Judd Lynn and try to like hurry up and you know rush things together so they can get back on schedule. 
with that being said, I'm hoping that even though he's not, he's like, I'm not trying to, basically it just to me, after sitting back and, and really evaluating it, what it sounds like to me is basically he's saying, you're going to get more of the same, but I'm going to try to make what you've been getting a little bit better. <laughs> That's the best way I can say it. Like, because I know what I want to say, but it's not coming the way I want to say it. But basically, I feel like that's what he was trying to say, is that, like, it's still going to kind of be what you're used to. It's still, they're still going to be the, the, it's still gonna be the same. You're still, I mean, you know. We don't want. <laughs> right. What we, what we don't want. There's still going to be some of that. But I do kind of get the feeling. I don't know. Maybe this is the gut feeling. I don't know. Maybe this is just, just me wanting to hope for the best. Maybe this is me just being optimistic. I don't know. But I do kind of get the feeling that he is like, you know what? I'm going to try to give y'all a good show. I'm going to try my best. And I do kind of feel like he's that type. Like, I feel like he's that type of guy that's like, you know what? I'm going to try. I, I really am going to try. But I do also get the feeling as well that there was a lot of things he couldn't say. <laughs> There's a lot of things he could not say for confidentiality reasons. But I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? Because I heard, I heard you moan, I heard you groan, Will, so I already know you kind of have a, a, an opinion on it. Well, for me, again, I don't know why, but I'm just very simple today. If the, if the internet can see me right now, you know that emoji face with the straight eyes and the straight lips? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's me right now. So, let's first picture that emoji on me right now. Like, I just feel like everything he's saying is just a load of crap. And he's just saying that to make it feel like, oh yeah, we're get, like you know, give us like that tiny little glimpse of hope that was never really there to begin with, you know, and and that's what it is because I get where you're coming from in terms of like he is new, he has to learn the ropes, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but don't be telling us, oh, you're gonna try to give us a good show when I feel like and I know that you don't have a bigger say in it, you know, you you don't really have a say in it. All you can do is literally your job and what you're being told to do, in other words, you know? So I just feel like everything he's just saying is just literally just to give us a tiny little light at the end of the tunnel that we were never going to get. And they've been giving us the exact same thing that we haven't want since Samurai. So I don't yeah. know what's going to change now. Because what when, when did Samurai even come out? I feel like that was a decade ago now. Mm -hmm. 2012 okay so basically almost a decade ago and they have yet to change their ways so i don't think they're gonna change anytime soon i don't even know why when saban bought it back he thought it'd be a great idea to recreate mighty morphin mighty morphin was great for for that time era for what it was it was fantastic but we all know we've grown up since then and when disney did it it was fantastic it was giving us all the feels all the right characters with all the great storyline and actual surprises that we didn't see coming. You know, lots of twists that we never saw coming. But with this, I just, it's, it's a little crap. That's my opinion on it. It's a little crap. I don't think, I think we're going to get exactly what we've been getting. It might, might be, and I, this is me being hopeful, might be slightly better than Beast Morphin. Well, go to hell off, <laughs> Lena. <laughs> <laughs> go off. Shoot. Will, will you, you, you breathing over. What, what's tea? What's tea? I, I, I know. I know. Oh, I don't, I, um, you, I, I don't, that's whatever. I'll, I'll see what happens when the show premieres, honestly, because I, it could be more of the same. It could be a situation where there actually are some changes. We, it's not fair to say, especially when they haven't even produced anything yet or, or, or did their cast selections. I'm assuming that that hasn't happened yet. So, you know, 
when it happens, it happens, and I'll be able to make my decisions on the series when it airs. Until then, like it's not really fair to to really say anything because I, you just never know. And this is this is a bit unprecedented because we're having one of those rare moments when we're having another company take the reins completely again. So right. we'll see. The last time that this happened, they started um, hiring more real actors. So maybe so, something like that will happen again. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I, I, I am. I'm. What you say? I said valid points. I I can I can I see where you're coming from. That those are valid points. I'm just I'm tired, man. <laughs> this is this is like like you said. Um, Samurai was that that was twenty uh twenty eleven. That is nine years ago. That's basically a decade. Wow, that is a long time of a lot of staleness, a lot of mm-hmm. insulting of, of people's intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot, a lot of wasted time. Honestly, that's why I stopped watching at certain points during during that ten year time period. So, I mean, it's it's not going to be hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to do it again, I hope I that that doesn't well. get that bad. <laughs> yeah. but, I'm dead. Um, and I mean, like, and, and that's fair. That is completely fair because, like, you know, it's it's one of those things where you know, I I, I know for me, like, it's one of those things where I'm just like, how many times, how many more times are we gonna keep getting bit? You know, like, how many times are we going to keep on holding our hands over that hot stove and being like, ooh, is it going to burn me? Is it going to burn me? Is it going to burn me? Ouch. Yes, it did. You know, and it's like, I understand that we were all hopeful because Samurai was the first season back since the show was canceled. And, you know, we were like, we were hanging out there for that one glimmer of hope. Like, yes, yes, yes. It will be better. It will be better. And then when it wasn't, it was like, damn. But then, you know, Megaforce came up. And then it was like, oh, we still got more. We still got more. You know, we, 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 you know, we have the, we have the, leg- we have, we have the legendary battle. Oh, my God. You know? Uh-oh. Yeah. And then they're going to use the Gokaiju suits, the pirate suits that they didn't even mention nothing about them being pirates. Oh, my God. Like, we're, we got this. We got this. Yes, yes, yes. And then, you know, that was crap. Then it was like, all right. Then we got Dino Charge. Dino Charge was actually really good. And we're like, oh my gosh, they're actually doing something with the show. And then Dino Supercharge, oh my gosh, what the hell just happened? So then that happened. So <laughs> then Ninja Steel, which was just bad all the way around. <laughs> and then you get to Beast Morphers where it's like, oh, this is actually good television. Like, this is actually a thing. Like, this is not bad. I mean, yes, it does it have moments of just like, what the heck is going on? Yes. But for the most part, it's not bad. So, I mean, literally, it's almost kind of like we had to hold out for almost 10 years just to get something mildly worth watching. Where we literally left a decade ago before the show was canceled. Well, around a decade ago before the show was canceled with RPM. And the show was fantastic. Even when Judd Lynn took over, and yes, it did slump when he took over. The, the, the show did kind of slide a little bit. It did kind of give us the Cupid shuffle. However, on the same token, it was still good because you still had characters that were great. The characters were still good. Um, so, it, so it still worked out. Like it was still a very good show. And it's just like, I don't know, like, going forward, you know, Dino Fury, there's just so many things. Like, I want for Hasbro, I want the Hasbro era to be great, honestly. I want it to be great. I want it to be great. And I'm just hoping that, you know, it's 
for this being like legit the first season of the Hasbro era, let it be a ninja storm. You know what I'm saying? Let it be a ninja storm. You know, granted, some people didn't like Ninja Storm, but for the most part, for me, I mean, for me personally, I thought Ninja Storm was great. I, I liked it. I love Ninja Storm. Um, so let it be a Ninja Storm. Don't let it be a don't let it be a samurai. Don't don't let it be that. You know. Um, does anybody else have anything else to say before we end this episode? <laughs> oh. <laughs> We are tired. <laughs> because I'm exhausted. This exhausted uh, me. Right? I'm telling you, I'm calling this episode, I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we are. Well, honey, listen. I have, I have a theory that I'm going to, that I'm going to express on next episode. This is just this, just this, this is just a hunch, but I'm going to express it on next episode because we're going to dive into. And normally we don't even do this. We we don't even do this, but I'm letting y'all know now. Next episode we will be talking about the Illuminati thing. Okay, we will be talking about it. Mm. And I have words so, words about this. Okay, oh Kirk, we got I I, I know you got words because I got <laughs> girl I got words. Okay. We I need to like work. come prepare, okay? We need to like take a twenty hour nap, drink a bunch of Red Bull, <laughs> and like come prepare for this. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you because I am ready to go. Like I am ready on this one. So next episode we will be talking about the Illuminati, uh, the Illuminati uh, article about um, Toei potentially splitting from Hasbro. Um, so yes, we will be talking about that. Um, and yeah, I'm also going to mention a theory that I have going forward and, um, the future of Power Rangers. So definitely tune in for that. But this concludes this episode. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. I'm Will. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.